Well, I could have read a uh, shorter version, leaving out the genealogy, uh, but I had a bad round of golf yesterday and in a bad mood, so I thought I would inflict this upon you. Uh, but in all seriousness, though, there is... First of all, it, I mean, the genealogy itself is pretty cool. There's a lot of little, what they call Easter eggs in there. You know, little, little hidden secrets uh, in the way that it's structured uh, and, and so forth. I'll mention one of those little Easter eggs in just a second. But today is kind of an unusual day. We, we celebrate the nativity, birthday, but really the church likes to use the word nativity uh, of our Blessed Mother. So pop quiz, who else in our liturgical calendar do we celebrate the nativity for? Well, I mean, obviously there's the nativity on December 25th, and then there's today's feast day. There's one more. Who is it? John the Baptist. Yeah, exactly. And there's a whole, there's a whole homily that, that goes into the reason why that's the case, okay, which I won't get into. We celebrate those three nativities. Why? All three of these days, a person enters into this creation, enters into this world, has one who is in communion with God. Okay, so obviously Jesus, the Son of God. And with today's feast day, our Blessed Mother, who on December 8th, so nine months earlier, on December 8th, we celebrate her Immaculate Conception. And now on September 8th, she's born nine months later today. But again, her, through that special, unique grace of God, she is conceived and born without original sin. She is in a very unique state that no other human person is in. Okay. John the Baptist, now what's interesting about his, his uh, uh, nativity, his birthday, it's actually nine months and one day. Okay, why? All right. His is celebrated, I believe, on June 24th. Okay, why is that? Well, because of the imperfection of John the Baptist as one who is born with original sin. Okay, so Jesus and Mary without original sin, John the Baptist, yes. So his per- imperfection has to make nine months and one day. But still, John the Baptist in Scripture, we hear about what? We hear about his sanctification in the womb. Okay, when, when his birth is announced uh, to his father, Zechariah, that he is what he sanctified already has a special, unique prophet in the womb of his mother, Elizabeth. Okay, so those three people, we celebrate the nativity. Also, we have to remember that in the early church, when did we celebrate the nativities of the martyrs? When they were martyred, <laughs> okay? The day of their martyrdom, especially St. Augustine was really famous for doing this, would celebrate their birthdays on the feast of their martyrdom. Why? Because what? They're born into communion with God. They're born into eternal life. And so just a couple other things then, as, as we celebrate this unique day of the Nativity of Blessed Mother, I read the genealogy because I wanted to point out the women that are mentioned in the genealogy. That's the key. The women that are mentioned are what? They have a very shaky and questionable past and life to them. You know, with the exception of Ruth, but Ruth, why she is questionable is that she's not a Hebrew. She's not an Israelite. She's a Gentile. And yet she is part of the story and beginning of our salvation. She is an important part of our story. Just like also with, uh, with David, his wife is mentioned, the wife of Uriah. Well, we know all about that whole story where, you know, David commits adultery with her and then kills her husband and then takes her as her wife. Again, very, very messy. You know, and the idea is, is that in the genealogy, it's a very broken, very sinful list of human beings. And yet from that, okay, God is going to bring first and foremost the Blessed Mother, where through his, again, special, unique grace, God forms his Ark of the Covenant. God creates his temple. We don't build the temple. We don't build the Ark. God does. God does. You know, and one last thing in all, in all this, 
that the story and then what we learn about our Blessed Mother, about her, her early years, comes from the proto-evangelization, proto-evangelum, I'm sorry, of James, the first gospel. Again, it's not a gospel text, it's not a scripture text. But within the story, it tells a very similar story that we're familiar with. That what? That our Blessed Mother came from parents, draw Kim and Anne, who are what? Who are barren, okay? Who, are, who could not conceive a child. And draw him, prays and intercedes for 40 days, okay? Before miraculously they conceive our Blessed Mother. Again, what's the theme? Why do I bring it up? It's God's working in all this. God's working. You know, and yet in our lives, we act as if we have to save ourselves. We have to provide for ourselves. We have to take care of ourselves. In times of trouble, we rely on our own needs and wants and our own abilities. But again, the first and first moment and the first thought should always be in our head that really all this and all our lives are in God's hands and it's God's work. In the same way that our whole salvation was through his prompting and through his working, so to our daily lives, through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, are placed into God's hands. May God bless you.